Hello everyone, this is Lolly with another video in my series of Lolly Tops in which I discuss my favorite craft tools. This time is going to be different because I'm going to discuss something that's not my favorite and something that I am choosing not to spend money on anymore. And that are the cheaper alternatives. I know you've seen the videos, uh, cheaper alternatives gets us all excited about saving money. I am deciding that I need to stop buying those things because they're not saving me money and they're giving me products that are useless. They don't perform as they are supposed to. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Um, when you're looking at getting a knockoff tool or knockoff craft supply, you're looking at something that is created uh, more affordably. So they might take another company's good design and then make it more cheap. So the problem with that is they can be poorly made, poorly constructed. So this is a, a good example I've mentioned several times, the gyro cut tool. This is the gyro cut pro, which has a different tip on it. But anyway, there are companies selling a cheaper knockoff to this brand. And so, and the plastic is probably cheaper too. They have to use cheaper quality materials in order to make it more affordable. But the worst part is, that the metal itself, the metal blade that's under this tip, is made of a different material that doesn't cut as well, and the blade is not as honed or ground to the right degree. And like in the gyro tool, gyro cut, that has two bearings in here, it makes a big difference as to whether or not you can actually cut well with it. So getting the cheaper alternative, in this case means you're getting something less quality and that doesn't function well. This is the Tonic Studios Tim Holtz paper piercing tool, also known as an awl, or in the crafty world, we call it the, the pokey tool. This is the one from Dollar Store. This retracts, it's a nice sturdy tool. This is super cheap, super uber lightweight plastic, and I have had this bend on me when I was trying to use it. So this has been a waste of my money. I would never do that again. And I'm not buying craft tools from the dollar store anymore. This is the only thing from the dollar store that I have found that really works for me, and that's the clamp. Another thing is paint brushes. Um, I have quit buying paint brushes from the dollar store and from other cheap alternative sources. I am not a painter, but I have found that when I'm when I'm doing mixed media or Mod Podge or anything, I'm finding that the, the bristles, the hairs are falling out of my brush into my project and I'm having to dig them out. It's also giving me streaks and it's clumpy and it's not spreading well. And I think I'm really bad at doing my project until I realized that the brush is also a poor quality. So I went to Jerry's Artorama. I said, look, I just do mixed media and a lot of Mod Podge and things like that. And I need a better quality brush, but I need low end brush from what you carry in your store. And they recommended Simply Simmons. What a difference. This really, has changed my world. Unbelievable the difference between a dollar store brush, etc., and something like this. Just so wonderful. Scissors. I mean, I have a whole playlist of these videos of my favorite tools, and I just completed one about my cutting tools. If you do not have good blades, they're not honed well, you're not going to get a good result. And you also want a, a scissor that can even be sharpened. So no more Dollar Tree scissors for me. I find that these knockoffs, these cheaper alternatives make me want to not do a certain craft anymore because the tools aren't working. I either think the craft is terrible or my skills are bad when the tools are what's inhibiting me, preventing me from doing a good job. Also, they end up in the, in the landfill, not a good solution. So I have used this several times in many of my videos. It's a self-healing cutting mat or rotary mat from Ulfa. Several times viewers have commented, well, I just buy mine from the dollar store. Really? This, I finally got one from the dollar store and this is not overused. This was used twice. No, I'm not being too rough with it. It's a regular craft blade 
just cutting some craft papers. So this is what happened. It's not a self-healing cutting mat. It's a rectangular piece of plastic colored green with a grid on it. That's it. And so this has been wasted money. It's going to go in the landfill. What a waste. Stick with the ones that you know are going to function well. Another thing about some of these uh, tools is that, so look how thick this is on the top. We use them for scoring. You cannot score with that being that wide. It's not going to do a good job. So that was also another waste of money. This was from Amazon, this plastic bone folder. Here's another one. Um, this is the real thing. This is Elizabeth Craft Designs die set. Fairly recently, one of her customers reached out to her and said that these dies don't even cut paper. And she said, please send a photo. And she could tell in the photo there were mold lines between the dies. And mold is mold lines are that metal that joins the die pieces and holds it so this is all one piece and you have to snap them off. Els recognized that. So this isn't even my die. You have bought a cheap knockoff from a company who has stolen my design. And so, of course, the, the die was not only not Elizabeth Craft, but it was a cheap knockoff. It wasn't made as well, and it didn't even cut the paper. So total waste of money for that customer. In addition to not performing well and being poorly made, many of these items are made with toxic materials. For instance, I don't know what kind of plastic this is, Many plastics are very toxic, and we have different toxicity standards in the U.S. than they do in other countries. And if a country makes this that doesn't have the same toxicity standards that we do in the U.S., then you might not want to have this. So you think, well, why does it matter? Because I'm just holding it. It could matter, like for me, bad habit I know I'm trying to break, but if my hands are both full doing something, I might put this temporarily in my mouth to hold it while I'm doing something else or put my paintbrush in my mouth. I don't want that in my mouth. Also, if it's toxic uh, materials, I don't want to put this in the landfill. So that's another thing that's bad for the environment, bad for us. Uh, Holbein colored pencils are in, in the U.S. and in Japan, but the toxicity standards are different in the U.S., and so they have two different sets of colored pencils, one that's for sale in Japan and one that's for sale in the U.S. That's why there's a different price. So if I use these on my video, someone will inevitably comment, I buy mine from the Japanese market because they're so much cheaper. Yes, but again, they have different toxicity standards. Another um, thing that has come up, uh, Catherine Pooler is known for these amazing ink pads that are soft and squishy, beautiful, vibrant colors. One of her customers told her, I bought your ink pad. It's disintegrating really quickly. Catherine Pooler said, this has never happened. I've never had an ink pad disintegrate. What kind of a stamp are you using? This is, this is an American company, and this is Alta New. This is their quaint uh, blooms stamp set, by the way. So they have certain toxicity standards in order to be continually sold in the U.S., but there are other uh, places in the world that would just steal that design and make it, in order to make it affordable, they're using such toxic materials to create those stamps, and those toxic materials are interacting with this and disintegrating the ink pad. That should cause us concern about buying those stamps as to what kind of toxicity you're dealing with. If, take a moment, please, and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'm also giving you a link under this video to my entire series of lolly tops in which I discuss my favorite and not so favorite craft tools. So my goal now is to buy less by quality rather than quantity and make sure I get the tool that's going to do the job. In the end, I'm saving money by buying the right tool for the right job from the right designer, from the right company, and to have something that I know is going to last forever and that is going to perform the task that I bought it for. If I had bought knockoffs, knockoffs such as this from all these companies and they didn't work, where are they going? in the landfill.
So let's please be more mindful of those things and save ourselves some grief by purchasing the best tool for the job. Thank you for watching.